We're good. All right, what's up, everyone? I've been here a while, but you've been sitting there watching us work with computers and me trash kinesiology and pretty much everything else you want to do, but that's just all fun and games. The fact that you're going to school is a step in the right direction. What you do with that degree, it's up to you. And what you learn after college, the experience you get is much more important than what degree you choose at this time. But anyway, the whole point of today's, I don't know, conversation, I like to call it conversation. Is anybody uh, familiar with TEDx Speaks? That whole lecture series? It's 13 minutes of presentation and the rest is Q&A. I think 13 minutes is even too much. If you have a question, interrupt me. I really am not getting anything out of talking to you. You know, maybe a couple numbers at the end from you lovely ladies. Other than that, I have nothing. I'm getting nothing. Um, so I did wear my best swag, so I was excited to pull these out of storage. But nonetheless, um, this presentation is about what you can get out of it. So if this topic even isn't something that's going to benefit you, hell, ask me something. I'm sure what you need to know will help someone else. Unless it's stupid, then I'll just call you stupid. Um, but the whole premise behind this presentation is building the brand of you. And this is a great topic because we're in a whole new age, an age that <laughs> when I went to school, we didn't have to worry about. We had networking, we had internal marketing, social media and all that stuff. It's new and guess what, your professors, do any of your professors work full time and run corporations? Are they CEOs? Any of them? Anybody here in marketing business? Anybody raise your hands? Okay. They're fucking reading books. They don't know what the hell's going on in the real world. They're not in the trenches. What's up? Mine actually was a CEO and then he retired and started teaching. How long ago was that? It was five years ago when he retired. A lot has changed in five years. True. I'm a CEO now. And he's probably a great professor, right? How many other professors do you have? Four. Are they CEOs? No. Boom. And also there's different viewpoints, you know? There's different CEOs, different models, different businesses. I'm gonna be wrong on most of what I talk about probably, but it's a different viewpoint, something you can take with you and blend it with the other stuff you learn and have a different view. The key is to gather information and choose which ones or what combination of each will work best for you and work best to enhance your career, your knowledge, and everything you do. So, today's topic is building the brand of you. How do you build you both internally um, within a corporation or within an organization and externally within a marketplace or within a given set to best enhance your opportunity to not only make money, but enjoy what you do, do what you want to do and excel in all areas of life. Um, so, professor, I just thought that was pretty cool. Um, who the hell is Mark Lobliner? Um, well, Chief Marketing Officer of TigerFitness.com, CEO of MTS Nutrition and at the Tech Nutrition, Vice President of ANBF, which is a natural body organization. To be honest, I don't really do much. Um, it's just a cool title. Um, partner um, at Hollywood Militia Fitness Coaching and President of the Uprising Muscle Camps, which is starting this May with me, Doug Miller, Ryan Doris, a bunch of other guys. It's a 501c nonprofit. Everything goes to charity. It's a muscle camp we're doing in Las Vegas. Um, it's a part, basically playing off what we've been doing in Plattsburgh, New York. We've maximized what we could do there. Now we're going to just donate our time, do muscle camps, and all the money goes to charity. 501c means no one makes a dime. So that's what we're doing. So that's what I do. Uh, former owner of Cyvation and Primal Force, Cyvation Extend. Uh, that our category is the intra workout category. We put that on the map while I was CEO slash owner. So that was, um, that's pretty much my claim to fame. Uh, that's really the only thing I've done in life. Pretty much founding shareholder with Instone. I was business partners with Sylvester Stallone. You might know him from Rocky, Rambo, and just some really, really, really bad fucking movies that he's done over the years. Um, before that, I was Weeder Publications, American Media, and advertising, marketing, more of a publishing side of things, uh, marketing side, all that good stuff. I'm a pro bodybuilder, a husband, and father of three. And I'm, I'm a pretty good damn cook, uh, just to be real with you. So. Yep, so, now we get into the fun stuff. Any questions before we move forward on me, what I've done, my preferences, okay, we're good, ready? Okay, good, remember, you could stop me at any time. I'm marketing you. There's two things, two things we're gonna focus on today, two. 
Two. The two major things that colleges don't really touch much. You know, they don't really get on it. They don't focus on them like they should. And that's positioning and differentiation. Without positioning and differentiation, your business is probably going to fail. Some people develop positioning and differentiation without even knowing they did it. They're just lucky. Maybe they're smarter than they think they are. Or maybe they developed it just because they have an innate sense on how to do business. But positioning was pioneered by Al Rees and Jack Trout. If you haven't read this, I don't care what your major is, buy this book now. It's called Positioning by Al Rees and Jack Trout. Um, like any tangible good or service, you need a memorable differentiating position within the marketplace. Examples would be Starbucks, Nordstrom, Southwest, and Walmart. Now, what does that mean? Memorable and differentiating. Why would someone do business with you? Why would someone want to associate with you? Why would someone want to know you, want to hire you, want to whatever? Why? That's your position. You need to create that position. What you do with products, per se, is you position them. For example, high-end. You think Starbucks. You go into Starbucks. You know what? You know you're getting a good cup of coffee. You know it's going to be quality. You know they have the position of you know, eco-friendly. Um, they do a very good job of positioning themselves in the marketplace. Um, and this can apply Southwest, the low price leader. You know, it's pretty simple. They did the free bags. I mean, you've got to find your position in the marketplace. For TigerFitness.com, personalized service. The worst position you could have for a brand, just off topic, the worst position you could have for a brand is low price. Why? Someone will always undercut you. You can always undercut someone's price. So unless you're Walmart, the low price leader really isn't going to work for you. So if you come in like, I'm going to sell it cheaper. No, you're not. Because unless you have huge buying power like Walmart, you get your ass kicked. So this applies internal and external. Internal will be marketing groups, business gatherings, LinkedIn, anywhere. External will be social media, where you can do this, where you can market yourself, where you can set that position. Um, so for example, my position. Um, the epitome of the utility infielder, that's internal within my industry. Reason being that I've done everything from manufacturing to marketing to selling to buying to internet to whatever. You name it, I've done it. Whether it was successful or not, I've done it. I at least know how to do it. So I'm pretty much a utility infielder. Nobody does what I do within the industry, which is combine, um, for example, being able to go out and do events as a bodybuilder and then go close deals as a CEO. So that's what I mean by utility infielder. So that's kind of where I've niched myself in a position which is unique to anybody else in the industry. So if anybody's thinking of, man, who could do all that shit? Ah, low blind. You know, that's kind of my position with the industry. Um, external, you know, if you guys are looking in, you know, and this is a guess because everybody will have their own perception of what someone's position is, but essentially what I've gathered is pro bodybuilders who balance it, pro bodybuilder who balances business and family. That comes from people who write into me, whatever, like, yeah, you know, you balance this, what's the advice on this? Um, you know, how do you do this? And it's basically the fact that I'm not just a bodybuilder going like, okay, I gotta make gains. I'm not just a business person be like, okay, I'm gonna skip the gym because I have a report due. I find a way to make it all balance out. So that's my external position within the industry. So finding your position. How do you find your position? And this is a, something that I can't answer for you. I, have, I actually had a company email me, a smaller company out of California. Stupidest goddamn question I've heard in a while. How do we sell our products? I wrote back, shouldn't you have thought about that before you started a company? It's kind of like yourself. Okay, how do I market myself? How do I, how do I set myself apart from everybody else? So then you gotta ask yourself some fundamental questions. What makes you special? Why are you different? Like you, why are you different from him? Why would someone, let's say you're in the same field competing for the same job, why would they hire you over him? I mean, he has better hair. So I mean, what would be, what would be your, you know, what would be your strength, okay? How can you differentiate? What can you do differently than your competition? which would be other people, other employees within your company, other companies within your industry. What can you do different? 
What can you do to differentiate? Differentiation means basically to set yourself apart. You know, everybody's going to be like, I remember when Muscle Tech came out, everybody's like, we're going to be the next Muscle Tech. No, you're not. Muscle Tech's Muscle Tech. Come up, and this is years ago. I'm like really old. So I mean, Muscle Tech's Muscle Tech. Come out with something that makes you different from Muscle Tech. So then you look at what are your strengths? How can you, what are your strengths as a person? What are your strengths as the, what is the brand of you? What are your strengths? And what are your weaknesses? Obviously, you don't want to set your position around weaknesses. I suck at math. So I'm not going to be like, okay, my, my, my strength is going to be my ability to crunch numbers. That'd be stupid. So obviously, don't set your own personal position, your own personal brand within the marketplace around a weakness. So avoid those. Does anybody here compete or know bodybuilding? When you're posing on stage, you hide your weaknesses. Okay, I don't show my triceps for shit. Yeah, I'll do anything to fucking avoid triceps. Side triceps, like, here's a fun. <laughs> you know, so um, always go to your strengths. Always go to your strengths. So, I love how this works. So, differentiate. There's the key. Why would someone listen to, do business, hire, talk, or make out with you? Why? Why would someone do that? Why would someone even want to talk to you? Let's say you're cold calling someone for business and you're saying, look, I have this thing that's going to make your business X amount of money. As a CEO, I get probably 10 of those calls a day or emails from companies from anything from you know, increasing your search engine optimization for a website or whatever. And I might return one out of every 100 of those. What makes me return that one out of every 100? Is it the person? Is it what they do? Is it what they offer? Is it the company? And that's what you got. They kind of marry together. So when you're positioning yourself, think about how brands position themselves. And look at how you position yourself. This applies for every industry. Gym industry. Okay, why do people go to some gyms? I know some people go to gyms just because the owner. Okay, is your brand going to be differentiated? Is your gym going to be differentiated because you're the owner? That's the thing. Is that your point of differentiation? Is that how... Why would, someone, why would someone do business with you? Why is someone going to talk to you? And then you take it all down to human level. Again, you go with the date analogy. You're at a club. It's fucking 10 guys to one girl. You all know how it works, right? Why, why are you going to get it? Okay, and then out of those girls, like, fucking like 90% of them are ratchet, right? So how, why are you going to get the hot girl? What makes you different? Same thing applies to business. What's your point of differentiation? So I always like to point to Lane Norton. Lane Norton's a guy that I, um, I, I'm great friends with. Um, I brought him on at Cybation as an athlete slash whatever in um, 2004. And we've been friends ever since. And uh, I just needed someone to work the Olympia booth. And um, he had a presence online. And honestly, he was cheap as fuck. So I'm like, hey, let's go. So the thing is, is that he did probably the most brilliant job of positioning himself of anyone I've seen in the industry. And he did that by utilizing his strengths. His strengths are, Lane's very headstrong. Like, if he sees something that he wants done, if he feels something's right, he, will, he has conviction. He'll make sure it happens. He's a workaholic. He's big on science. He'll read abstracts all night. Um, he earned his PhD, and while he did that, he was writing articles for free offering advice for free, helping people for free. Um, through that time, he built up himself in the prep, you know, little prep ranks. He prepped a bunch of naturals and made them, you know, pros and this and that. Did a great job marketing himself, utilized social media at hand, um, and was able to really get out there. He was really big on the message boards when those first started. And he's now regarded as one of the best in the business. And if you look at Lane and what, you know, the thing is, when you're a guy who positions itself and differentiates, um, Lane and myself have one thing in common. A lot of people really don't like us. I think Lane has more haters than anybody, though. I mean, if you put in, like, Lane Norton, like, half the words that came in, uh, came in after on Google are really bad words. You know, and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, and, and the thing is, it does get to him. It gets to everybody. But the thing is, his position is results in practicing what he preaches, as well as science. I mean, he earned his Ph.D., you know, and very few prep coaches and people doing what he does have a PhD. So it sets him apart from the pack. And while that took him a lot of money and a lot of time to do it, he's now pretty much at the top of his field. 
So Lane did such a good job of positioning himself, but he also utilized his contacts and relationships, which we'll get into later. Lane was brilliant and is brilliant at networking. And he's a legitimately good guy. So don't let me, don't even take this as, okay, you know, Lane's just a swindler. Just that. No, Lane is probably one of the most loyal, nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life. He's just really smart and really knows how to work with people. Science guys are very abstract. They're very kind of out there, very technical. A lot of the times, Lane does a good job of kind of combining the two. So here's the tools you have at your dispense, at your, at your fingertips, which we didn't always have. Social media, like I said in the beginning, has changed everything. It's changed everything. And uh, I don't know if you all know, but Saturday is my birthday. I'm turning 34. I'm not that old. Okay, I'm pretty old compared to all y'all, but I'm, I'm, I'm not that old. Um, I gotta go, my Depends is actually getting a bit full right now, I gotta change it. Um, but when I, when I started my business, we had to walk uphill in the snow. We didn't have to walk uphill, I lived in California. Um, I basically drove for 300 plus days in my car, spreading the gospel. I'd go visit stores, I'd do seminars, two people would show up, and i just work my ass off. And I had to go to so many damn places to hit 10 people. T 10 people would take me like 10 fucking days, man. 10 days, it would be crazy. I had a Toyota Corolla, and as you can tell, I'm not built for a Toyota Corolla, even back then as a lightweight. It just wasn't comfortable, and I made it happen, right? Um, and again, you meet these people, they might tell a couple of their friends that you're all right, and you're not spreading it out. Now, with social media, and Twitter, and Facebook, and Instagram, you meet 10 people, they posted here that you ever look at the Facebook fan pages like reached? How many people have post reach? Reached like 10,000 people. That's 10,000 impressions. Now in the marketing world and advertising, 10,000 impressions cost a lot of money. The CPM on that is huge. Yet you're able to do that just utilizing other people's social media and making that impression. Okay, um, YouTube. YouTube is Google. Google owns YouTube. Google is a search engine monster. So if you market yourself, if you brand yourself via a YouTube channel, what's gonna happen? You have all those web crawlers coming up, you, Google's able to pick it up. So if you have a business, there was a guy in California who owned a wine store. And as you can tell, none of this shit's written down. I'm just making it up as I go, but I, I read stuff, I can read. It took me years, but I finally figured it out. Um, he owned a wine store. He just started doing wine reviews in his cellar. I just started doing, you know, like, hey, here's some, he wasn't even captivating, he was just like, hey, some Chardonnay, and it's good, it's dry, whatever wine tastes like, I don't drink wine, but, and next thing you know, he's a viral sensation, his business is up, guy's a millionaire now, and it's harder to do now because more people are on YouTube, but just think about it, it's free, and Google even pays you for the Google ads that run on it, so you essentially have an advertising vehicle where they pay you to advertise which didn't exist in 2006. It's 2014, yet as early as, I, as 2006, 2008, that didn't exist. Um, Twitter. I don't get Twitter. I can't do anything in under 140 characters. But Twitter's viral, man. You watched the Olympics a few years ago. It was like, hey, hashtag blank on Twitter. Twitter's, Twitter's great. And Pinterest, which I don't get because I have a penis. I don't understand Pinterest, I don't know how to use it, but people seem to like it. <laughs> Facebook has monetized itself, it's not as good as it was where if you have a fan page, because you have to pay for reach, you don't get as much reach as a fan page. But it does its thing. I think the biggest up and comer right now, because it links to Twitter and Facebook, and it's so interactive, even though they can't hyperlink from there now, is Instagram. I think for building a brand, um, I think the biggest up and comer from what I can see is gonna be Instagram, but again, you have to have a strategy. We were just, I think we were talking about that today. Instagram and what you do with it. And um, Instagram's a unique character because you're essentially building a story every day. And you're essentially building your personality. And it's different in business now, where in business, people want to do business with people. It's not just an intangible, um, basically, good or service. People want to actually know the company they're doing business with. And that was pioneered back in the day. Sam Walton at Walmart. Everybody looks at Walmart. Oh, they're just this, that. Dude, that company was built on town hall meetings with Sam Walton. You know, it was just one of those companies. So, you know, that's one of those where you just have to look in and say, I think Instagram, if you're looking at, okay, what's coming up next, what's coming up hot, that's there. And that's another tool to use. 
Any questions before I go on? Because again, we'll um, elaborate on a lot of things as we go on. Anything I said that confused anybody? Any questions about YouTube or? Oh, there you go. I know you got a lot of followers on YouTube. What did you just start making videos and that and hope that people would follow you, or did you go on other people's channels and promote yourself, or what was your start to that? Because it's kind of tough to get subscribers at the beginning. Well. The question is, how do you get subscribers and followers on YouTube? The key is, nobody really cares about science. They just want to be entertained. And I think the word will get out there. Obviously, collaborations help, but, you know, not as much. I mean, you could collaborate and get, you know, transient subscribers all you want. Thing is, you got to keep them in. And you got to keep them captivated. you got to have constant info. There's a couple ways to do things. You can have consistent info, or you can have just really, really good videos. Like Frank Madrano, the calisthenics guy, he'll get like 8 million quadrillion, a million trillion motherfucking things. I mean, he, he gets a lot of views. His videos come far and if you few and far in between, but they're, they're amazing. Um, so there's many ways to do it. Collaborations help, but I think you need to build a base. You can't just come out with no videos and say, okay, here's a collaboration. Um, the way my channel started was essentially, and I don't, again, like all political correctness aside, when you talk amongst friends, you say some things, right? And I remember when I first started, I had to non-compete with Salvation for two years after I sold the company. So my first thing is I went to TigerFitness.com and you know we were doing our thing together. And my partner Chad at the time, he's like, hey, you should do a YouTube channel. I wasn't really big on YouTube. And my initial, my first statement on doing a YouTube channel was, that shit's gay. That's just why, you know, you talk amongst your boys, I'm like, I meant it in the most respectful way. <laughs> but you know, you talk to your friends. And um, so I did it, and we started doing product reviews, and it developed into training, it developed into more a lifestyle type channel. So I basically let it develop as people wanted it to develop. But I was also selling a tangible good or service. Now if you're working at branding and marketing yourself, YouTube's the same as any other thing that we're talking about here. How are you gonna differentiate yourself from the other eight million channels on YouTube? Why is someone gonna waste their time watching your channel? Why is someone gonna spend five minutes are you just going to get on there and do a bicep curl? Type in bicep curl on YouTube. First of all, porn comes up. I'm not sure how that happens. And I watch it. But no, I mean, at the end of the day, you need to give people a reason to watch what you put up there. You collaborate all you want, but if your content is garbage, no one's going to watch it. So what's your point of differentiation? Mine essentially is the balance, the mix, and all that good stuff going on there. Um, I personally am tired of training. You know, I, talking about training does not interest me. I'd rather talk about business. I'd rather talk about, you know, anything except for, um, except for training. Um, it just gets old. How many times do you do bicep curls? It's like, hey, bro, I got my new training video up. It's a guy doing rows. I'm like, awesome. Unless you're doing a fucking impressive row, don't even bother. You know what I mean? Like, the only reason I do it is because people follow, like, the workouts. Okay, oh, okay, you're doing this. Okay, oh, here's his goals. Here's his progress. But I've also built up my channel. We just can't start posting training videos. You get, like, five views a video, and I've seen that happen. I get emails like, hey, bro, can you give us a sh And the shout-outs are just stupid. What am I supposed to do just out of nowhere? Hey, bro, check out this channel. I'm like, no, I'm not going to give you a shout-out, not because I'm mean, but just because it's, it's corny, man. <laughs> I was talking to uh, Jerry Ward, who has another, he's done really well kind of differentiating himself. Um, and, and somebody was saying that he was talking shit about me, and I just, I emailed him, you know, we're from, you know, he's, he's old like me, right? And we're from the old school. And, um, and I'm like, bro, are you talking shit? You know, one of those, like, like, no, man, I, I don't give a fuck, you know? And we were just kind of talking back and forth, and I'm like, dude, we're just too old for drama. And at the end of the day, there comes a time when you're just too old for shout-outs. And I just think I'm too old. Yo, bro, shout out to my man over. Nah, I'm not. I'm not going to shout anybody. And don't go asking the big channels for shout outs because they're just going to ignore you. And it's not really going to do much. But if you have a chance to collaborate with someone, go train with them, have them shout you out, that ain't bad. That ain't bad. It depends what you're trying to do, though. Like, what market are you trying to hit? Are you trying to just grow your channel? Are you trying to make money off YouTube or use YouTube to build money into your company? Trying to use YouTube as a marketing force or use YouTube as a source of income on its own? What are you trying to do? That's an actual question. It's not rhetorical. You're asking what I'm trying yeah. to Yeah. Well, I have a pretty big Twitter following, but I don't know how to crack into the YouTube world. So I'm just... Well, what's still, why, why do you have a big Twitter following? Because uh, I have a 
this is my company that one nation under bars and people like feel like they're a family you know part of this one nation under bars and they get like a uniting a weightlifter type of thing and so what kind of content do you have on there uh it's more motivational than anything fucking motivate people yeah Get up there and put a cheerleader outfit on. I don't know, but figure out a way to motivate the fuck out of people. There's your differentiating point. You're the motivation channel. Bro, science life, he's the, the funny guy who just makes fun of CrossFit. <laughs> Shit's funny. CrossFit is the only thing that teaches you how to do the correct way to do an incorrect pull-up. Which is so fucking true. Um, so yeah, there you go. You know your point of differentiation. Now you just have to figure out a way to deliver it. Because anybody, it's, it's, it's almost easy to, fi figuring it out is one thing, delivering it and executing it, that's going to be a little bit harder. So figure out a way to communicate that position to people. And I think you'll be in a really good spot. Anything else branching off of that? Internal. Okay, let's say you're working within an organization. And you're trying to move your way up. And I recommend for people, everybody wants to start a business, and a lot of what I do lectures are on entrepreneurship because I've started businesses. Um, I recommend against it, at least in the beginning of a career, because 90% of all new businesses fail. It's hard enough to get a fucking job, to start a business where you have a 9 out of 10 chance of failing. I'm going to generally go with statistics. I always think it's good to work for someone and find out what sucks about how they do things and what's good and mirror your company after that. So basically, live and learn. Um, so internally, let's say you're trying to work your way up, you're trying to get yourself known within an industry or the organization, you got LinkedIn, that's a great thing, you got your resume up there, what you've done, it automatically blasts into your Twitter feed, so make sure you don't tweet like, I hate life, I want all birds to die. You know, just know that what you put online also stays there. It's always there, it doesn't go away. Just know that. So, you know, I've done videos on this where these guys are like, yeah, I'm doing all these drugs and this and that, it's like, when you're like 35 and you want to get a real job and they Google you, <laughs> it's going to look really stupid, isn't it? So just realize that what you put on there now, it might catch up and bite you in the ass. Um, networking. They even did that back when I was your age. Networking is pretty fun. You just talk to people. You go to the grocery store, you talk to people, you meet people. You don't know how many people I still keep in contact with. I've sat next to on a plane. You never know if you're sitting by your next job. If you're sitting by your next connection. You never know. You never know. In her office, that janitor might be running a company one day. I've seen it happen. Not janitors, but I've seen people pretty low on the totem pole go up here. Hell, half the damn industry, half the owners in the industry, I worked with at Weeder. James Gray, Jones, Sparta, part of BPI. You know, Lai is doing his thing. I mean, Jim Stepani. I mean, dude, everybody from my class at Weeder I mean, we literally have like five or six of the companies in the industry being Vito is the VP at Muscle Tech, who's, who's at my wedding. You know, it's like these guys are, you never fucking know. At that time we were equals, now we're equals, but we're all up here. So just realize that everybody you meet, nobody's below you. Because they're going to leapfrog your ass one day and you're going to need their help. So just, I think the moral of that story is don't be a dick. Treat everybody with respect and you're not better than anybody. Even if you have to sit in the back seat of a two-door explorer. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Facebook and other social media work. Like, you can be friends with your boss, but again, use caution. You know, I, I'm more kind of out there, because I just don't give a fuck at this point in my career where I can say whatever I want and get away with it. But if I was working for someone and I had to play the corporate game, you don't go on Facebook like, I don't know, saying anything that could offend anybody. Just realize that if you have a public profile and they're going to see it or they're going to get it forwarded to them because there's someone in your company who's going to try and stab you in the back, just realize that Facebook can be used for the greater good. Keep it positive, keep it clean, and realize that that will affect your overall reputation down the line. And, there are, and don't worry, when you apply for that job, how many people here, okay, what, what, is, is every here upperclassman, lowerclassman? I mean, what's the most? Who's, who's like junior seniors? Good. How many of y'all want jobs? Let me get out of school. Okay, we just did a video on my man Sean and I did videos now. Everybody's like, oh, the job market out of school. Dude, we didn't just have jobs. So it's not like I got out of school. I'm like, fuck, there's a job coming at me. No, there were no jobs then either. You had to go out and do shit jobs. 
You're going to make bullshit money doing bullshit work being someone's bitch. Welcome to the real world. You're going to be someone's bitch unless you're lucky or unless you're smarter. Maybe I was just retarded, you know? <laughs> we just did a video on this. The job market sucks. Our economy sucks, but... Four, you know, 12% versus 7% really isn't that big of a deal. There's not many jobs. Now, that also has to do with what major you chose and what you expect out of what you do, but you're going to have to work an entry-level job. So just realize when you get out in that world, you go to that interview, you put on some fly-ass gear like I got on now, but don't wear a suit. Don't dress like this. This is more like Rico Suave type shit, right? But you go to that job, you get a, always wear a suit to an interview. I just want to say that. I don't care if you're interviewing for fucking dog groomer. Wear a suit. Okay? And you're going to be like, like, yeah, you know, he seems like a good fit. Guess what they're going to do as soon as you leave that office? Fucking sit in this chair, turn that shit around, Google your name. How do I know? I hire people. We Google names. Actually, I don't give a fuck, but I mean, you know, but people Google names. So just realize everything you've done online, they're going to find it. Unless your name's like Joe Smith, and there's like 8 billion of you. But dude, you're screwed, Robert. Your name's all fucked up. I mean, they're going to look at your last name, and they're going to go, oh, dude, we know exactly about this guy's experience with that goat. I mean, we know all about those charges in Missouri. <laughs> just saying. So just realize, be cognizant that everything you do online, it could be your best tool, best asset, or your worst liability. Any questions about that? Because I think that's a good piece of information. I actually do. I wasn't even planning on talking about that. Oh, look at these. That's so cute. Okay, check it out. So start with Bill, how to promote yourself. Pretty simple. Start with building your network. Your network, people you talk to. As we used to say in my day, the Rolodex, which is basically your contacts on your iPhone. Um, Rolodex is used to have to turn them and there's fucking paper and stuff. Um, it was a big waste to the environment. We appreciate you guys fixing that. Thank you for the Prius. Um, but no, start building your network. And your network is key. All this newfangled stuff, Facebook, LinkedIn, Excuse me, Twitter, Instagram, YouPorn. Those are all things. <laughs> it's my social network. Those are all things that those are all things that are really freaking cool, right? That's really cool. But what are they there for? They just enhance your ability to build your network. But why do I travel 300 days a year? It's all about personal interaction. You can't give someone a bro hug online. I'm not sort of suggesting you bro hug people. But I am suggesting that person-to-person -person contact is still the best form. So if you have a chance, and your network can be built on social media, but remember, you don't have to stop there. Don't be caught behind a computer screen. It'll just limit your uh, future development. And then find out who your market is. I want to point to you because you actually asked a question. Everybody else in here sucks. Um, who's your market? Weightlifters, I'd say, not just any person going to the gym. So male people. dominant. Uh, yeah. Probably ninety percent male. Uh, no, I'd say like seventy. Yeah, that, yeah, that's probably fair. Okay, there's your market. There you go. Who is your market? You found it. Is it moms? You know, let's say you're making. I'm just saying, like, let's say you knit caps for kids. Kids can't fucking use credit cards, so you're going after moms, right? Figure out a way to get those moms. Fitness enthusiasts, gamers. Gaming's a huge market, man. Those nerds are crazy. Um, players, hoes, hustlers, pimps. Just find your market. Find your market. Whatever it is, know who you're selling to. Um, for me, you could say it's everybody who wants to increase health, the health and fitness lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. Generally males between the age of 16 and ah, 32. I mean, if you really want to narrow it down. It's a male dominant market, um, but however, you know, it is, there, there is women. So I think the 70% is, that's, that's basically, I always look at what muscle and fitness was when I was there, and it was about 60, 40, 70, 30, and muscle and fitness before muscle and fitness hers came out was the most um, sexually gender, whatever, gender bait diverse magazine there was. So I like to say 70 to 80 is about right. 
Um, then you activate that marketplace. How do you do that? Um, post pictures. Be entertaining and captivating. Like when you come out with you, why is your, why do people, what are you posting on Twitter that makes it grow? Um, I'm sorry I'm picking on you. No, that's all right. But I'm actually kind of interested. Yeah, it's a lot of quotes, um, but just like with a period at the end, it's not like hashtag. 10 million hashtags, it's just straight to the point, usually no more than like 10 words. And so you have your format. Yeah. Consistent, that's another thing, consistency. Consistency is key, that's awesome. So when you go to, um, to you know, obviously, when you go to YouTube, how do you activate, you know? And that's, that's awesome, so you have that thing, you know your market, and that's why people are growing, because it's simple to the point, it's motivating. Okay. Anything else that you think really stands out? Mm, like I said, it's just kind of like being a part of a team. I kind of call it an, an elite team. So they like people like belonging to shit. Right. Like animal. They sell hardcore multivitamins. That doesn't even make sense to me. Yet everybody, well, people are getting A's tattooed on their ass. I'm like, okay. It's awesome. They created, but people want to belong. You know that hardcore. You know, Senapani's not there anymore. But it's like, well, Senapani takes these multivitamins. <laughs> You know, um, be entertaining, captivating, find a way for people to want to watch your stuff or give information that people want to know. You know, it's, it's one of those things like, I'll tell you what, this might sound a bit weird and creepy, but sometimes even though I'm saying it, like on the, the first amino spiking video, I watched it and I was actually like, what's he going to say next? Because I was so excited about like, because it, it, I got to admit, it, it freaking floored me when I found out that was happening. I actually, everybody's like, dude, why are you acting surprised? Because I am. I thought it was like two or three grams. I didn't know it was that crazy. You know what I mean? I didn't know it would blow up to be this big issue. I, I was like, hey, I got a cool little story. I'm going to run with it. Turns out that it's like, it's absolutely crazy. So, I mean, you know, when you, if you're going to offer information, if you're going to be an information-based person, be captivating. Make people want to know what's next. You know, you ever like watch it? You know, I think the, the show 24. You guys ever watch that? Jack Bauer, the cell phone that never died. Yeah, you know, the thing about that show, when it would end, I'd be pissed off. Because I really want to know what happened. It's like they do ding, ding, and then it's over. You're like, well, what's going to happen? Be that channel. Why is someone going to come back? You know what I mean? Leave them wanting more. You know, why are you captivating? Be entertaining, too. I mean, I learned that from the Hodge twins when I first sat down and just chilled with them a little bit. They're good dudes. They're like, people just want to be, no one, you can have the best info in the world, but if people are falling asleep, it's really not going to get it across. You got to be able to get your point across, be entertaining, and captivate. Controversy is another way to do things, and it works. I mean, you see it in mainstream, like Lindsay Lohan, and um, what's your face with the fat ass? Um, there you go. <laughs> I, she's controversial um, and it works up to a point is it a long term sustainable business model shit it works for Mark Cuban I mean you know what I mean you guys know who he is Dallas Mavericks okay cool owner of Dallas Mavericks for those who don't know and he's he's all I think he does it on purpose so like pick a topic and just go full retard on it <laughs> you know and I, I love the guy because even if I don't agree with him I'm like this guy's just alpha as fuck he just doesn't care um, pick an alternative viewpoint. Now we're going to go back to positioning or branding. Whereas you want to pick a color opposite your main competitor. You notice how the top two are like either, you know, like in rental cars, like you got Alamo with their blue and, and, you know, I think it's, you know, Hertz with their green or whatever. You know what I mean? They pick different colors. Basically, if everybody's saying one thing, ProLab did this back in the day with MRP. Everybody was low carb, low carb, low carb. They came out with lean mass matrix and we're like, Hey, you need carbs. So pick an idea or positioning different. So if everybody's saying, and again, I'm not saying say something you don't believe, but if everybody's saying one thing like, hey, you need to do tricep kickbacks to build bigger arms. Like, I don't know. I think you need to do this. You know, pick an alternative viewpoint. So at least then you have some topic to debate and discuss and offer an alternative viewpoint. If everybody just got up and said the earth was flat, you know, that would get kind of boring after a while. So Pick a topic to debate on, and again, an alternative viewpoint from what everyone else is saying. Um, daily content. Um, consistency. You can't go dark. 
You know what I mean? You got to make sure that you post content. The more content you have going back to YouTube, Google, search engines, I mean, it'll get picked up by crawlers. And then it just enhances your channel's SEO and gets it going on like that. And then we're going to go to monetizing. Any questions before we go into monetization? Okay, cool. Um, the fundamental, vo this, is the, this is the take home of everything I do in life. Um, because we can all have a dream, but unless it can be monetized, it really means fuck all. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. I mean, look, when I was a kid, when I was in eighth grade, and this is a very, very sad story, I wanted to be in the NBA. Then I didn't grow any taller at all for the rest of my life. And I realized maybe basketball is not for me. Okay? So while the dream of mine was to play in the NBA, maybe that's not a good idea. So while you might have a dream of, I'm just going to use this, of opening a gym, before doing it, be sure to look at your landscape and make sure that you don't lose your ass and have to have sex with grapefruits to pay your bills. Because we've seen where that can take your career. Might even cost you an Olympia or two. All right, so make sure that if you, if you have a dream you want to do, make sure you can monetize it. Um, affiliate programs are one way. Let's say you have a YouTube channel, a Twitter, whatever. Different websites have it. MTS has one even. I mean, at the end of the day, affiliate programs, let's say you build up your online persona or this and that, and let's say this is just you're marketing yourself as a fitness guru, whatever you're doing yourself. Instead of coming out with your own brand, which costs money and capital and takes away from everything else you do in life, find a way to maybe affiliate and get paid off of that. Because there's a lot of money to be made with affiliate programs. Um, even simple stuff like a Best Buy has an affiliate program for headphones. You know, things like, I really like these headphones. Click on my link below. There's ways to monetize. Just always look at a way to monetize because everybody's, oh, you're just trying to make money. At the end of the day, money's good because if you don't have it, you're, you're fucking broke. So there's nothing wrong with offering a service and monetizing that. So if they click on your link and they even save a little bit or don't spend more, you, you refer them to someone, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, Google Ads. Again, if you have a website, if you have YouTube, whatever, Google Ads are ways to monetize. Um, and again, if you build up your persona, you have Instagram, you have this, you have that, and let's say you're not affiliated with a company, you got hats, shirts, glow-in-the-dark condoms. I'm not sure if they have those, but I think I'm going to come out with them next year. Um, those are things to do. And of course, networking, use what you're doing. Use what you're doing to build up. Let's go into networking. Um, making friends is the single best way to build the brand of you. Making friends. That's the key. You got to make friends. The brand of you will be built more if you have more people who like you and follow you. Um, treat everyone. Again, like I said before, you're not above everyone. You never will be. Never underestimate the power of number two. While you might be like, I'll only talk to the CEO. Remember, his assistant, she's right up there. He's right up there. You know, at the end of the day, you're going to be talking to someone within an organization who might have influencing power. And again, you can never know too many people. Someone who gets your foot in the door, someone who gets you in the door, gets you that meeting, whatever. Um, attend industry functions. Um, if you get in on some meetings, go meet people at the, you know, if you're in the fitness industry, the Arnold. If you're in the fitness equipment industry, there's a big show in Chicago. You know, whatever it is, spend that extra money if you're looking at that organization to network at industry functions. Um, I used to go to them. I don't anymore like ad age type events and stuff for advertising and marketing. I've kind of fallen off the grid on that, but those are things to go to. You know, I still go to the Inc. 500 stuff, you know, um, the, you know, whatever we won that, what was that, the Fast 50 Awards. I'll go to those. It's always good to network with similar people, similar businesses, and even if they're not, it's good to network, period. Um, follow up with your contacts. If you get a contact, send an email. Make sure they know that you didn't just forget about them. And again, follow up is key to anything. Build legit friendships. All my friends are, I work with, I don't have any friends outside of work, not one. You know, period. Other than my brother. And he's kind of, you know, DNA bound. And we're married in West Virginia. And basically just be nice. I mean, just be nice to people. Any questions before I move on? Anything? All right, at the end, just throw shit at me if I miss something. So what I recommend for you, finish university. Why? Because it's the new high school diploma. Doesn't really do much. I'm not convinced a degree is going to do shit for you. 
But when you look on Monster, it says it requires a four-year degree. Once you get that initial job, you should be able to coast on by. The last five people I've hired in my career, I don't even know if they have a degree. Just hired a guy last week. I have no idea if he went to college. I do now, but we're already going to hire him because he's proven himself in the industry. Once you get your foot in the industry, but what college does, I was just talking to my brother about this, it kind of, he learned more, he was a server, he was a waiter to put himself through school. He learned more doing that than he did in college. College teaches you how to learn, how to work in groups. I'm not sure if what you're learning is really applicable. That's just me being real with you. But finish because you're here and someone's probably fucking paying for it. Um, just, you know, don't get too drunk. Um, oh shit, I just said don't get drunk and then I say, okay. Wait, no, no, this works. Um, work. Um, college, while well, all about getting drunk and getting screwed are part of it. Use it to build your future. Go to class. You never know when you're going to do that. I had one professor in college. She was the man. You know, you never know when you're going to do that professor who's going to change your life. So just be sure to learn as much as you can from who you go to class with. Um, get a job, career, work for someone else. Don't. You can. My business partner did with Tiger Fitness. It can be done. But that's the exception, not the rule. So unless you have a million dollars that's just waiting to fall out of your butt crack, I wouldn't suggest starting a business right out of school. Go get a bitch job like everybody else does. <laughs> just go be someone's bitch for a little bit. Um, amass contacts, network, build yourself within the industry, find you, what is your position, why are you different, why, what are you passionate about, and answer yourself, how can I monetize this? So you're really passionate about the gym thing, right? Fuck, even if it's not the gym, how can you monetize your passion? I have no fucking idea, but that's for you to find out. You know, um, my passion was always, and this is real, this isn't like, this isn't just like some, some bullshit sales spiel or anything. My passion was the reason I got involved in health and fitness, my mother's a drug addict, my father died of type 2 diabetes complications, and I wanted to do something involved in health and fitness to help people. That's legitimately why I got started. But at the end of the day, I also have bills to pay. Now, if you can do a job where you can wake up every morning and you can legitimately look yourself in the mirror and look yourself in the eye and not feel any remorse for what you did the day before, you got the right job. You got the right job. If you're legitimately helping people, dude, we're, ah, fuck, hopefully Stu doesn't watch this. We raised last month alone, we raised $17,000 for muscular dystrophy through Tiger Fitness. We raised $30,000 in the past year for cystic fibrosis. We've given thousands of dollars to Wounded Warrior. We're giving back. And we do that, we don't have to. But that's what we do as a business, it's part of our corporate culture. We also help people. When people call in, we don't say, hey, I want to gain, I don't make games. Our first question, if, you're, if one of our phone reps gets caught saying, well, take this pill, they're going to have some friggin' conversation. We're going to have a bone to pick with them. So. If you can make a good living, and think about it, if you own a company, like later on, if it's what you want to do, if you want to be an entrepreneur, remember, every decision you make doesn't affect you. It affects everybody. That's a lot of pressure. So if you, let's say you build that gym, you're employing 20 people, or let's say gym, seven people. They all have families, mortgages. You're not just YOLOing that bitch. You're YOLOing it for everybody in your company. So just remember, it's a huge responsibility, unless you're a heartless piece of shit to be a CEO. Just remember that, it's, it's a huge undertaking. So if you actually have a heart, every decision you make, you have to think, how will this affect Bill? How will this affect John? How will this affect this guy? These employees, because they're the reason your company exists. They're hard work, because they're treating it, they should be if you're running your company right, like it's their own. That's the corporate culture you should try to build. Um, the conclusion is, Again, positioning and differentiation own all. So the question you need to ask yourself is, how am I personally gonna position myself within my organization or within an industry or within the mainstream for you? Um, and with positioning, what differentiation, what makes me different so I could create that position? If you can answer that, if you can answer that, you can actually be anybody who didn't see this on YouTube or anybody who didn't like come to this. 
you'll literally be 10 to 12 steps ahead because positioning and differentiation, I didn't read that book till I was three years out of college. And it changed everything. And that was the point where I think my career just took off. So those are things you think about. And here's the extremely homoerotic picture. Um, basically ask me anything, and again, the reason I'm not wearing underwear is there's a boxer and briefs joke. So go ahead, um, that concludes it. This is open Q&A. Anything you want to ask, if I didn't cover it, no holes barred. If it's about business, marketing, training, whatever, I don't care. Just uh, bust into it. But until then, thanks for listening. Yes? First bitch job was at a feed store. My job was basically to throw 50 pound freaking horse and dog food bags up a thing. My second bitch job was at a shoe store, um, which was great because it wasn't a good shoe store. It was like a cheap one where it's like they sold LA gear. Do you guys even know what LA gear is? And it was after LA gear already was done. And like, yes, yeah, I'm stinky. He was a big five sporting goods in California. You know, big five. Yeah. That one didn't see me. That's right there. So yeah, it's, um, that was the second bitch job. And honestly, um, I wouldn't consider trainer a bitch job, but the hours made it kind of a bitch job. So I've had, um, I've had my share of bitch jobs. And you know what? I learned a lot. Like, dude, Sentinella, I worked at Sentinella Feed and Pet Supplies in, um, it was right, right, on, right in Venice, Venice Beach, California. And um, the beauty of it was I learned the best thing that I use now, upselling. We sold pig ears. Everything, it's like, even if they didn't buy, say, hey, you want some pig ears? Like, we don't have a dog. All right, our bad. It was a dollar. But it increased our daily, t it, and imagine if you had 100 customers come through the store a day. We had two cents in a pig ear. We sold a dollar pig ear 100 times a day. So 100 extra dollars of EBITDA, of straight profit, out the door. So what I've learned is that even if you cut a few dollars off something, if you notice, a lot of what I do is stacks. The customer saves, and we have a higher ticket sale. So I learned about stacking from Sentinella. You never know where you're going to learn that shit. So the bitch jobs you have might be the million dollars you make down the road. Oh, keep going. Okay. So maybe you can help me out with my situation. So I've been offered a very solid Take care, brother. Thanks, man. Have some pizza. <laughs> I've been offered a very solid job for, like, the second I graduate. Like, this, the Fortune 500 company is very high up there. They're a very reputable company. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, once the second you graduate, we want you on our team. But I'm having difficulty, like, staying motivated. And, like, because, you know, I mean, like you say, like, hiring managers don't give a shit what your major is as long as you have that four-year degree. So it makes it hard for me to stay motivated because, like, how do I, you know, write this fucking paper for a class I don't give two shits about when I know I have a guaranteed job after and I know I'll succeed? You know... I always risk sounding old. When I was in college, <laughs> oh, God, we used typewriters. Uh, no, nah, we um, I took a course. I actually took a few courses on Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. And what I learned from those courses, the critical thinking involved and about their history, it really taught me a lot. So it might seem like it's bullshit now, but it's an exercise in just getting the process done. And... Um, you know what? There's nothing wrong with paying your dues. Just think of it as a way to pay your dues. You'll get your degree. But at the end of the day, do you really want to do something half-assed and put your name on it? You know, it's like, if I'm going to come out with a new product, again, at risk of sounding like I'm marketing my companies, which I should be because I got bills to pay. You know, um, at the end of the day, I don't want to put my name on something that's half-assed. Like, if I come out with a new flavor, like our mint cookies and cream launching next Wednesday. Um, no, if I put my name on a new flavor, I'm going to be like, Fuck, we nailed this. You know, we nailed it. I mean, I'll literally, I, I sent an email to Kara, and like, I'm like, I got it. Like, the new flavor I can't tell them about. I'm like, I did. You know, it was one of those where you're just so excited about it. So, I mean, everything you do in life, I always like, if you put your name on something, you got to make it your work. So, even if it's fucking, I took coaching football, I think, in college. What a stupid class. But I was like, well, if I'm going to fucking put X's and O's on paper, I'm going to make sure my freaking defense is set, you know? So just make sure that if your name's on it, staying motivated, I mean, it's hard, I get it. And maybe you want, might wanna go into cruise control instead of spending 18 hours on a paper, spend 12, 
but still make it at least your work. I mean, at the end of the day, you're putting your name on something. It's hard to stay motivated at the end. I, I get it. I get it. I mean, and, and a lot of times you're filling in bullshit courses because you got your cores done. I get it, you know, but, and I did the same thing. I'm like, what the fuck do I care about this for? But you still, you know, maybe pick something. I mean, if they're electives and you can do it, pick something that you like more. Um, and then something you know you're going to hate, you know. Um, that's why I took coaching football. So, stupid fucking class. I mean, I doubt any football coach has ever taken coaching football. <laughs> it was awful. That and I took um, birthing, which was a bad mistake. <laughs> yeah, it was like, like childbirth. It was a childbirth class. And I had no idea at that age that the vagina could get so big. I had to walk out of class. I'm like, I was so calm about it. I'll never forget. I'm like, 